Hello everyone, this is Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion, and welcome to another video in the Learn from the Pros series on Adobe After Effects. In this video, we'll continue learning about special features you can apply to layers in the After Effects timeline. We're going to be learning about track mats, which can open up a whole new level of complexity in your motion design and compositing work. We already learned about masks in an earlier video, which is one way to control the visibility of different parts of a layer. Masks are definitely useful, but since they move with the layer they're on, in animation sometimes that's not going to be the right solution. So we're going to learn about track mats. That's when you use one layer to determine the visibility of parts of another layer here in After Effects. I pointed out where to find the modes column in an earlier video, but in case you didn't catch that one, let's make sure we all know where to find it. After Effects actually consolidates the switches and modes columns into one space by default to leave more room for the rest of your timeline. So if you only see your switches, there's actually a little toggle button right here at the bottom of the panel. You can also toggle these by pressing the F4 key. You can add or remove them by clicking these icons here in the lower left corner of your timeline panel, or you can add or remove any of these columns by right clicking up here, choosing columns, and then enabling the ones you'd like to see. Let's say that I only want this photo to be visible within this hexagon shape. We just need to make sure the modes column is visible. And then on this photo layer, right here where it says track mat, I'll click on this drop down menu and choose alpha mat hexagon. You can see the top layer is no longer directly visible. Its eyeball switch has been disabled. And now these two layers each have an extra little icon that they didn't have before, which indicates that the top one is being used as a track mat for the bottom one. If I toggle my transparency grid, you can see that this photo is indeed only visible within that hexagon shape. If I actually want the opposite of this, where I see any parts of the photo that are outside this shape, I can choose the next option, which is alpha inverted mat. I should point out that this photo layer is actually just looking at whichever layer is directly above it to use as a mat. So if I were to change the layer order, you can see now it's using this text layer as a mat instead. So you do need to be aware of the layer order when you use track mats, because if you don't keep these two together in the layer stack, you'll end up getting results that aren't what you expected. That may seem like a hassle if I were just doing a simple shape cutout, but it means that you can easily create complex cutouts with something like text, and you can animate these layers independently, which gives you a lot more control. Every layer in After Effects has what's called an alpha channel, which is a channel you don't usually see directly, but it contains information that determines the transparency of different parts of the layer. With the track mats we just applied, we're using the alpha information of the top layer to determine what portions of the bottom layer are visible. Using luma mats works the same way, but instead of looking at the alpha channel, it's using the white and black parts of the top layer, or its luminance values, to determine what's visible. If I were to use this black and white gradient, and I set my photo layer to use that as a luma mat, you can see we get this nice gradual fade. If I toggle the transparency switch, you can see that it is indeed causing this photo layer to fade off from fully opaque to fully transparent. If I set this to luma inverted, you'll see it's just the opposite. This mode is really handy for incorporating texture into your designs, and for giving you a lot of control over the final look. If I wanted to use this texture to kind of erode this shape, I'll make sure the layer that I want to use as a mat is on top. Set the hexagon to use that as a luma mat, and there we go. If I feel like that's a little too extreme, I can actually use effects, like levels in this case, on the texture layer to change the output of its white and black values, which then affects the ultimate visibility of my hexagon, since that's what's driving it. I can animate both of these independently if I want, to create an effect like this. Or if I want to make sure the texture always moves with my hexagon, I could parent these layers together, which I'll show you how to do in the next video. One last thing I'd like to show you in this column is this little square right between the blending modes and the track mats, which is actually the preserve transparency switch. When you enable this switch on a layer, that layer will then look at the combined alpha information of everything below it and use that to mat itself. This is useful if you want to apply a texture over multiple layers, for example. Here I have a shape and I have some text, and you can see there's obviously a lot of transparent areas around them. And then I have this texture on top, which has its blending mode set to multiply. If I enable the preserve transparency switch, now this texture gets applied over my text and my shape, 
but it's not visible anywhere else in the composition because it inherited the alpha information from these other layers below it. While it does mean extra layers to keep track of, understanding and using track mats can make a huge difference in the amount of complexity you're able to bring to your compositing and motion design work. Be sure to check out all the other videos in this Learn From The Pro series on Adobe After Effects. For Adobe Creative Cloud, I'm Kyle Hamrick from School of Motion. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.